everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's going to help us start looking at week number four from a DFS perspective. What's happening, Jim? Well, good, Greg. I think this week four slate is shaping up pretty well. We got some value plays with guys like Wayne Gallman. I'm always j jacked about that. So uh, it's starting to look pretty good. We'll talk more about the values for tomorrow, but some stacks on tab for today, and I always love me some stacks. So I am dandy. How are you? Three stacks of high society, my friend. I'm feeling great. I'm not understanding everybody's Wayne Gallman love because he's not good. That's okay. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But let's start today's show off exactly where we started last Wednesday's show off. Stacking Patrick Mahomes and Sammy Watkins. The prices have changed, but your love for both of them hasn't. Yeah, the price for Sammy Watkins has actually changed in a good way because he is down to $6,900 this week. And I think that that's honestly just like super attractive given the volume he has got. But overall, this is just a really fun game for Kansas City because according to Jordan Reed of the Draft Network, this is the first game for Patrick Mahomes in his entire career in a dome. And I always love targeting dome games. So giving me someone as good as him in a dome seems Kind of unfair. So I'll, I'll happily take Mahomes for $9,200 in this spot. But Sammy Watkins, I think, is the prime jewel here. He has 29% of the Chiefs' total targets this year, paired with 23% of their deep targets. Travis Kelsey is getting more deep work, but Watkins has gotten... Good volume downfield. Darius Slay is banged up for this Detroit Lions defense, which could make things even better for Sammy Watkins. I will not say no to Miko Hardman and Demarcus Robinson, but when you're getting someone whose target share is as steady as Watkins and who has the talent of Watkins, I'm going to happily take it. So Watkins is $6,900. I think it's just a bargain. And what that does is it kind of helps offset the cost of Mahomes up at 92. That is a lot to pay for a quarterback, but with Watkins being, at least in my eyes, super underpriced, I think it help, helps mitigate that. So this is a good game to stack overall. I like uh, some guys on the Detroit side too, but I want to start things off with the Chiefs, with Mahomes, paired with Sammy Watkins. There's really not a wrong answer within this Chiefs team, but I think things, for me at least, do revolve around Watkins. It's crazy he didn't have a single game last year in a dome through the first three weeks. No game in a dome. This week in Detroit, it's going to be a whole lot of fun for Patrick Mahomes. And whether you're putting out Demarcus Robinson or Miko Hardman or Sammy Watkins, it's going to be fun. The Chiefs, they're always fun. Let's continue on non-Chiefs edition and let's get to Seattle where Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett have found a combination that works. And it's not a surprise because a lot of fantasy analysts coming into the year expected it. And it's nice when things go right. Yeah, and things have gone right in a big way the past two weeks because Tyler Lockett has at least 12 targets in both of those games, and now he's going up against the Cardinals. And we always want to target teams facing the Cardinals because they want to run up in pace. And what that does is it inflates play volume for the opposing team. That is awesome for this Seahawks team. And in general, I have concerns about the Seahawks passing game because they don't want to pass if they can avoid it. But with the volume Lockett is getting and with how good this matchup is, it doesn't matter all that much. Even when you include week one, where Lockett had just two targets, he still has 28% of the Seahawks' total targets this year, paired with 32% of the deep targets. He had three targets in the red zone just what last week alone, and he's still $6,600. So Lockett can turn a deep ball into a touchdown, but he's also getting looks close to the end zone. So for $6,600, he is just way too cheap. Russell Wilson, kind of similar at $7,800 because... If we get a situation where Arizona does get a lead, they will let Russell Wilson throw. And as we saw last week, that can lead to a lot of fantasy points in a hurry. This dude is just way too good uh, when they do let him throw. And the good thing about quarterback and fantasy is that you don't need a lot of volume for the guy to pay off. You need efficiency and Russell Wilson should be efficient against this Arizona defense, even though this game is on the road. So I, I really hope that Arizona can score some points here and make Russell Wilson throw a bit more, but even if that doesn't happen, I still think that the Seahawks are a pretty good stack here. Lockett cheap enough to compensate for that at 66, and Russell Wilson efficient enough to compensate. So both those guys really fun in what should be a pretty high-scoring game out in Arizona. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be really high-scoring, and this combination of Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett, it's really working, and whether there's a lot of quantity there or not, it doesn't matter as long as he gets the job done. I also think you have to, I'll throw it back to you, 
Love Will Disley this week at the tight end spot. Yeah, I was initially kind of skeptical here because Disley's snap rate had been low, but then last night they trade Nick Vanette, and Vanette was the guy who was taking snaps away from Disley. So what that does is it opens up additional snaps for Disley. Russell Wilson clearly trusts this dude near the end zone as he threw him a touchdown last week with no time on the clock, uh, had those close targets against the Steelers as well. So Disley is $5,400. I think that if you want to spend down a tight end, he's probably your best option, but if I can use Tyler Lockett for 66, I'm not going to pass it up. So I'll have both here, Greg. I'm going to use both Lockett and Disley. I think it's just a, a really good spot to go at either guy here. But I do prefer Lockett just by a hair. Doesn't matter if you go with Disley or Lockett. The Seahawks are going to perform this week, facing off in Arizona. You can't go wrong with whoever you're taking, as long as Russell Wilson's in there for Seattle. Up next, we go with the Chargers, who are 16-point road favorites in Miami. But it's getting a little interesting. Could this be the last week we could capitalize on Austin Eckler? Man, I hope not. I've had a lot of fun with Austin Eckler so far this year because he gets so many targets. He's just a really fun guy to use in fantasy because I love targets out of my running back. So uh, I think that I would like for Melvin Gordon to, you know, hang out on this couch a little bit longer, you know, not get injured because I like Melvin Gordon too. But Eckler has been a lot of fun. This is a great spot for him. He is on the road in Miami, as you mentioned, 16 point favorites. That spread may be a little bit meatier than it should be, given that the Chargers are going across the country. They're playing a 1 p.m game they tend to not blow teams out either for what for one reason or another which i think maybe makes the spread a little bit enticing or a little bit too large here but i think that it's still a good spot to go with austin eckler and the chargers defense because josh rosen will start once again for the dolphins and rosen is someone who's been in bad situations his entire life but in those bad situations, he has been prone to mistakes, which is good for the Chargers defense. They are $5,300. That is quite a lot to pay for them, but they can be worth it, as the Patriots showed two weeks ago against Miami. As for Eckler... He has at least six targets in every game so far this year. He has 17% of their targets overall for the season. And those are really good numbers for a guy who is $8,100. Now, it's worth mentioning Justin Jackson did eat into Eckler's snap chair last week after Eckler lost a late fumble in their game back in week two. That is worth keeping an eye on. But I think this matchup is so good and Eckler is so good that it doesn't matter all that much. It is something that I am monitoring going forward because Eckler could lose snaps even if Melvin Gordon does not report, given that Jackson looked pretty good last week and did get some extra snaps. But I think in this matchup and given how good Eckler is in the passing game, I am still okay rolling him out here. $8,100 is expensive, but in this spot, I think it is still worth it. And pairing with the Chargers defense worth it too. You heard the numbers from Jim. Austin Eckler has been dynamite all season long. And even though the spread is 16 points, that defense, it's going to do their job against Josh Rosen and the Miami Dolphins here this weekend. While this may be the last week we can use Austin Eckler as an RB1, I still think he'll have value when Melvin Gordon does return. It's not going away that quickly, we hope. From one L.A. team to another with the Los Angeles Rams at home taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jared Goff is an obvious play, and his favorite target in the red zone, it's Cooper Cup. Pair him up, and you have a stack that I want to play. Yeah, I really wanted to go with Brandon Cooks here because Brandon Cooks is like stupid good. He's at home, and I always love guys of his, his, his mold at home, and I wanted to go Cooks. But then I looked at the salaries and saw the cup was actually cheaper. He's $7,000. And given what we saw last week, that probably should not be the case. So I'm going to get me some Cooper Cup here. So far this year, in his return from his ACL injury, he has 30% of the Rams' overall targets, along with 25% of their targets in the red zone. And he's converted a lot of those into touchdowns as well. We saw Sterling Shepard last week from the slot get three deep targets from Daniel Jones. He did produce on those targets as well. So we should see a good matchup here for Cooper cup against the Buccaneers. I always love this Rams team at home and Jared Goff should be able to produce too. He is $7,700 and whenever he's had a big ceiling game for the most part, it has been at home against bad defenses. The Buccaneers bad defense as I showed again last week, Devin White, their rookie linebacker still in doubt. And if he doesn't play, that's going to open up more room in the middle of the field for Cooper Cup. So I do love Brandon Cooks. I want to make sure I get some Cooks in there, too, because his upside from a yardage perspective is just insane. But Cup is $7,000. The safety there is unreal. And because of the touchdown equity he carries, the upside very good for him, too. So I will not talk yet to Brandon Cooks or Robert Woods, but I think that Cup is my preferred target here at 7000 And Jared Goff at 77 makes for a really fun stack as well. 
Jared got notoriously better at home than on the road, notoriously better against bad defenses than good defenses, who isn't, which makes him a perfect start this week. And whether you want Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, they all make sense. But for us, at this price, Cooper Cup's the obvious solution. So you, you should do that. Up next, we go to the Indianapolis Colts, who very well may be without T.Y. Hilton this week. And as we saw in the second half last week, when they are not, when they don't have T.Y. in the lineup, they're going to rely on that running game. And that means more Marlon Mack. I really like the Colts this week. And I like the Colts' defense. I've been picking them up as a streamer this week. Jim, how do you like pairing off the Colts' defense with Marlon Mack? Yeah, I think one way to view this team, Greg, is kind of like a discount version of the Eckler Chargers stack, because what you're getting is a team that is a decently heavy favorite and is in a good spot. And they also, like you said, do want to run the football. We've seen that with Marlon Mack consistently so far this year. Even last week when he practiced just a limited session on Friday, missed practice on Wednesday and Thursday, even while being banged up, he still played 62% of the snaps. He had 16 carries in that game along with three targets. That's in addition to the three targets he had the week before that. So Mack is still not hugely involved in the passing game here, but he's getting enough where I can still feel pretty good about him, especially when they are seven point favorites at home against a bad Oakland team. Last week, Dalvin Cook kind of went nuts against this Oakland team, and I wouldn't be shocked if Marlon Mack were to do the same this week because how good that offensive line is and has been for a full year now. Again, six targets the past two games for Marlon Mack. A lot of snaps for him, and we should see a favorable script. So for $7,300, I think that Marlon Mack is a really good buy this week, and the Colts defense is $4,200. So Mack, $800 cheaper than Austin Eckler. The Colts defense is $1,100 cheaper than the Chargers, and they're at home against a an offense that has had its struggles so far this year. So I am very okay with going with Marlon Mack and this Colts defense. I think that uh, if you can't get up to Eckler and the Chargers, Mack and the Colts a good way to get there. If Mack does well, the Colts defense should do well also. So I think this is a good stack and a bit cheaper one than Eckler and the Chargers. Absolutely. It's a bit cheaper and, well, that's our, that's the name of the game, right? You get cheaper, then you can get these Chiefs in there like Patrick Mahomes and Sammy Watkins, potentially. So stacking the Colts with that massive offensive line, as you mentioned, one of the best in the NFL over the last year, well, it makes our job nice and easy. One final stack to get to here, Jim, and that is with the Houston Texans, where Deshaun Watson survived the Chargers last week, and much of it, of course, was thanks to DeAndre Hopkins. You can't go wrong with these two. How come they're on the bottom of our list? I don't know. That's actually a good question. I just happened to put them in order that I thought of them. And maybe I should have thought of them earlier because this is a really good spot for Houston. The reason they've been kind of, you know, out of sight, out of mind so far this year is they weren't on the main slate in week one. And each of their first three games have come against teams that are pretty slow as far as situation neutral pace goes. But the Panthers rank second in situation neutral pace, according to Football Outsiders. So this is a pace up game for Houston. And you got to love Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins in that scenario. Hopkins hasn't really gone off since week one, but even despite that, he still has 32% of the team's overall targets this year. He has 26% of the deep targets, and that's while facing three really tough cornerbacks each of the first three weeks. Things light up a little bit here against Carolina. So Hopkins at 87 makes a ton of sense. Deshaun Watson at least four rush attempts each of the first three games. That's not a huge number, but... He also doesn't need a lot to go off. So I think that that's pretty good for him. $8,200, that improved offensive line of Laramie Tunsil. Yes, Deshaun Watson is still taking sacks, but they are giving him better protection. So I think in this spot at home, in a dome against Carolina, it's a pretty good spot to go at Houston. I don't mind running it back with your guy, DJ Moore, or with Curtis Samuel as well, given how good Kyle Allen looked last week. So pretty good game to stack here. Might be my favorite game to stack on the board. I haven't really decided how I want to rank my game stacks yet, but I think this one is up there. And the most logical stack within that is Deshaun Watson with DeAndre Hopkins. Yes, it is expensive, but with some of the value plays available, it makes a lot of sense. We can get there, then I will try to do so as often as I can this Sunday. Yeah, that's a game we're going to target as well. Carolina and Houston, both teams should put up some points. Got to like the over there. Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, always a good combination. Get it in my man DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel as well. That should be fun too. A lot of points, as I said, expected to be had in this Texans-Panthers contest. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Jim. Let's do it again tomorrow and go over some of the more undervalued players on this week's slate. 
Yeah, I got my work cut out for me. It sounds like talking you into Wayne Gallman. So we'll discuss that and why he's awesome starting tomorrow. And I look forward to that discussion. And we'll talk to you then, Greg. You let me know when Jason Kokrak wins a tournament here, Jim. <laughs> It'll happen. Just wait your time. All, all of my favorite players are great, like Marcus Mariota, Cody Kessler. We've never been wrong on talent before, right? So we'll, let's give it a shot with Wayne Gallman, too. Cody Kessler could be a future Super Bowl winner now that he's signed with the Patriots. That's going to do it for us. Have a great night. Jim and I will be back tomorrow. Good luck setting those lineups, and we'll see you later this week.